as I say, there are obviously positives within the current squad. That's what has made this season a little bit weird because at times there are clear, I think, positives, especially in the attacking sense. I mean, I think from an attacking point of view in terms of recruitment, as much as there's concerns over the weight of expectation on young players who are inexperienced who go up and down, I actually think the output has been some of the best we've seen in recent years. If you compare this season just to last season, you see the output of Nicholas Jackson versus the expectation level of him. You look at the output of Sterling, you look at the output of Palmer, Madawake in recent weeks has, has seemed to be uh, influencing things as well. Like On that aspect, there has been positives, but there still is that kind of confusion and, and concern actually that the the direction of travel for the club still isn't the most clarified. And I, I mean, I'm personally of the belief that I would just scrap this whole multi, multi-club multi and multi-sport director model and just go for one sporting director and really clarify things back to the Emiliano days. Like, I don't... When there's someone like Michael Edwards still out there, still hasn't been given a major role. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, Paul Mitchell, who... Is, is someone that's been linked with United for a couple of months, but still nothing has happened. I, do you agree with that? I, because I, I don't I, I don't see it. To me, it feels like there's internal politics going on from what yeah. I've heard. There's yeah. player there's player preferences, which you always get in any sporting model at Liverpool at Man City. I'm not saying that like people can't have different opinions on targets. That's that's not the point. But yeah. it's like there's it feels like people are kind of um lobbying for their own players that they've maybe known in a previous job or job, yeah. they're like this is a pet project for me and it's like are we actually signing players that are the best for Chelsea or because politically this is what you want and this will give yeah. you better credentials later down the line rather than just mm-hmm. let's get a sole sporting director who's going to make that judgment the 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 process is a lot more clarified that's my major concern at the moment yeah I mean you can link all these players back isn't it the Lavias to Man City um you know, with his connection with Joe Shields, you've got Caicedo, obviously, former Brighton, Sanchez, Ben Roberts, former Brighton, Kukurea, of course, before, but before the sporting directors came in. Uh, Madaweke, who apparently was on um, Leipzig's shortlist, potentially, before he um, obviously made that move from PSV. Obviously, we had Christopher Vavell, who fell out with with the with the sporting directors and the other um, guys in charge, and, and maybe his direction wasn't being taken seriously enough. He didn't have enough control, so he said, listen, I'm just going to just... Um, you know, see myself out. So I, I would prefer one figurehead. I think that's the way other clubs have done it as well. And I think it, like you said, it clarifies what we're actually trying to do and puts everybody in one forward motion. I don't want, um, I like to have obviously different thoughts and opinions in one room because I think it ends up giving you a bigger and better result. Um, and I think the more, the more people that can bring to the conversation, the better. But there still needs to be somebody to answer to. And I think there still needs to be one person that leads this um, as the, the lead sporting director, as the guy that, that has the, the yes and a no and an, an approval and, a, and, and gives the final stamp. And I think Edwards is in that position to say, I've already done it at a top club. I've got the experience. Um, a lot of these other guys haven't done it at top clubs. Um, they've recruited for clubs with lesser expectations and with less pressure and with, and with less of a microscope on their recruitment, I think, as well. Because if you make that transfer that costs £10 million at a Brighton or a Southampton and it doesn't work out, yeah, listen, the, the consequences are still potentially poor. But I don't think they're as, as highly um, scrutinised as they are here if you make a £50 million transfer. So you've got more money, but with that comes more pressure and more expectation and more scrutiny. So I do I do want someone who's been there and done it a bit because throughout this club, there's too many people that haven't been there and done it. Um, and that's why I think people are calling for Jose Mourinho because they're just looking for any connection. I think people have spoken about it before. There's a lack of connection to the, to the squad, lack of connection to the manager, lack of connection to the board. There's nobody there at Chelsea right now that we recognise that we can say, right, even if you go back to having Petr Cech as a sporting director and, you know, people, there's there's no one for anyone to say, right, that's my guy, that's that's Chelsea. So now there's a couple of players, but, you know, it's it's not enough. And that's why I think the, the calls for Mourinho are even more, um, they're even more magnified because it's not like his, his performance as a manager is really anything in recent times to, you know, to, to go crazy about. I think it's more trying to get that connection back and, and the, the intangibles, funnily enough, which is rarely 
brought up enough it for players you know people don't tend to but for manager right now yeah the intangibles are massive <laughs> do people really want it <laughs> mm. yeah i think um the Mourinho thing is 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 interesting to me because i think it in a lot of ways is a continuation of stuff i have seen online and just in general chelsea discourse over the past 12 18 months you know in terms of longing for that past longing for sort of that nostalgia of, of a previous Chelsea that has, has gone and people wanting it back and and not feeling like there's that connection to the current ownership. Like and I I feel that when I go to Stanford Bridge. Like I can't I can't deny it. Like when I turn up at Stanford Bridge, my it's not just about like being cynical or nihilistic about things. It's just I don't I don't feel that connection to the current group of players. And that's not to say I don't like the current group of players. It's just it does and and unfortunately, I mean, maybe it's the same for you. You hear things behind the scenes that unfortunately mm. make me more cynical and yeah. more disconnected. Unfortunately, at times it feels like the stuff I get told <laughs> are worse than even my most cynical fears. So I'm like, <laughs> this is this just, it just, you know, prepares you to kind of make that distance even further to the club. And I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on Rooney? I, I'm personally not open to it at all. Um, and that's I spoke about it on my morning show on Friday that this is not to try and diminish his impact, his legacy as the greatest Chelsea manager of all time. And like there's it, it, to try and replicate what he's done and compete with what he's done is going to be very difficult. But I just, especially with the squad we've built, I don't know if someone can please answer and explain to me how Jose Mourinho walking into a squad of players under the age of 25 makes us better and how he isn't going to flip out and go, I want a bunch of 29 year olds and, and how he makes that work. I just, I don't, uh, that's, that's throwing to side the, the character, the, the, his tactical kind of relevance nowadays compared to a decade ago. I mean, what what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not entertaining either. Most of the arguments that have been brought to me have been um, very much emotional, I think, and very much based on the feeling and based on the mentality and based on the passion and based on the connection. And yes, some people go to the winning side of things. He won the Conference League, but we're not interested in David Moyes. Um, you know, he he's obviously got to the Europa League final. He's got to the um, Carabao Cup final for, for Tottenham before he was sacked. Um, but he didn't win those things. And, you know, people we're not interested in Poch's Champions League final. You know, they're not interested in even him win, winning League on or finishing second in League on. So what? So why? It feels like the goalposts are moving. And I'm talking about Mourinho over the last five years. I'm not talking about Mourinho in his prime at Inter Milan, at Porto, at Chelsea, at Real Madrid. If we was getting that Mourinho, different conversation, but we're not. And I think the thing is with Mourinho, what comes with it is there is a lot of PR around him because he's a massive character and he's a massive name and people get swept up in it and, and they get reminiscent and nostalgic about what he did prior and they can't separate Mourinho in, in his prime and Mourinho today. Um, and people talk about the money spent at Roma, but you also have to look at the, the the increased wage bill and the players that he did bring in because they're all instant impacts. None of them are young players or anything. He's brought in players to 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 do the business right now and they're not doing that. Um, in, in that league, you know, with the position that they're in. So I love Mourinho. Um, if anything, I'm trying to protect him. You know, people will see it as, a, as an insult to to say that he shouldn't come back here. And, you know, how could you disrespect our legend? I think I think it's more of a disrespect to put him in a position that he can't win. Um, you know, for me, this is not a team that's ready to win major trophies. It's not a board that he's going to work with for, for any longer than 12 months um, before things blow up. And I look at him and think, for your career and your legacy, does it make sense for you to come here a third time and probably not pick up a Premier League or a Champions League? Or does it make sense for you to go and do an international job um, or go and go to a Newcastle where if you do win a, a Carabao Cup or something, it is history. It is for the first time in a long time. And you are making um, things happen that haven't happened like you did at Roma for the Conference League. So I just think if it was a different name, um, under the same circumstances, Chelsea fans wouldn't bat an eyelid. And that's always a red flag to me if someone can't justify um, a, a move of that magnitude without the name. I think if the name doesn't exist, they don't do it. So for me, that's 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 a no for sure. You can't you can't make that move. Yeah. Yeah, it is it it's it 
it is kind of just wanting to as i say i think some people are just trying to feel something and it's like yeah. yeah i understand that kind of wanting of nostalgia but there is a bad side of nostalgia that you know leads you down a path of i think that man united maybe have fallen victim to of just constantly trying to chase your tail and it's 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 reactive move after reactive move i wouldn't put it past this ownership to go to Mourinho in kind of like a panicked moment i wouldn't be surprised if there are people within that ownership structure right now who see the glitz and glamour and the headlines and the pr and think to themselves there could be some commercial benefits to having Mourinho. but if we're being a serious club if we're being a team that wants to compete with liverpool man city arsenal in the upcoming years then no like there's no they're, they're, for me there's no point beyond vibes like it's just vibes it's a vibes it's argument just like vibes, that's what literally. it is and that yeah, yeah and, and it's not and you know that's kind of my frustration with a lot of the discourse now i don't know if you feel similar it's like i i feel like a lot of the discourse comes down to sound bites in press conferences clips of coaches on the touchline but it's like what are they actually doing to improve the team like a, a clip of thomas tuckel shouting at a player is good but like that performance that that clip was from was pretty woeful and was a representation of a downfall in performances under that head coach like so and a nice fiery comment in a press conference might make people feel something but is it actually representative of a club going in a positive direction or is it just someone having a rant like i don't what's what's the tangible effect if that guy's having a rant in a press conference like jose used to and chelsea were the best club in england yeah like nice but if if that's just if it's all just like let's have it feels like wwe like let's just have a nice promo from jose mm. Mourinho. let's just yeah. have those vibes let's have those touchline things let's have those memories but like mm. he won't have frank lampard on the pitch as a number eight he won't have no. diego costa he won't have jt he won't have t book or tomorrow better checking goal like yeah it's just people when i've tried to press them on it it's like they have very very little justification for it it's just yeah. well at least Jose, the argument I've heard, oh, Jose will like come in and at least put a rocket up the players. And it's like, what does that mean? What does that do? <laughs> does, does, that, does, does that make them f finish their chances? Like, does, that, does that suddenly improve their conversion rate, which is, which is not, not being good enough? Does that? No, it doesn't. You know, all of these, all of these are short-term, all, all of these are short-term benefits potentially benefits and very little medium to long-term gains um and that's why it wouldn't last two seconds and you know you take a look at the first few months of press conferences and interviews and it's, it's very reminiscent of like almost the Lukaku transfer in a way where it's like the, the PR and the promo is just too good to be true you know I can I can see it now everybody's gonna love it it's gonna be incredible but then when it actually gets into the thick of it and that runs out and we're now back into game by game results, performances, no PR and promo can save you then. Like now it's time to to get to get the actual, you know, let's get what we're what we're bargaining for. And the thing is with Jose Mourinho that you can't ever really push and you can never try and make it his his thing is we're not here for the long term. If Mourinho is coming in, we need to deliver because he's not going to be here for a long time and his 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 way of building a club isn't for the long term it's to win now the signings will be now the the pressure will be you know will be there and it will be about delivering it's not going to be about trying to build anything for the long term and trying to 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 see some sort of vision we will be in it from the beginning you know we need to deliver now that's 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 what Mourinho is all about you can't change that and if you change Mourinho if you try to make him a long term manager and try to make him you 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 you're almost wasting your time now now you're not even now you're not even getting Mourinho for what you bargained what you wanted him for you're just yeah. you're just making a, a a diluted version of someone else really final thing is just your expectations for the rest of this season um of mm. course something mad could happen in the January transfer window before before deadline day but it doesn't look that likely um kind of to set out where I I'm looking for Poch and people have asked me like who are a little bit more sort of skeptical or very critical of Poch in recent weeks is like to me my kind of parameters and kind of the way I'm going to be judging him is not only just it's not to say league position is irrelevant but like it was a bit like Potter this time last year like I 
I want to see a sense of progression in the team. I don't want to see a team that looks so reactive game to game that we're only the tactical and kind of profile judgments being made are purely because we need to win the next game. It's like how it, can the team look a lot more effective? Can players look like they're actually moving in a positive direction under Pochettino? If we finish like seventh, but then actually from a play style point of view, something has moved forward and you can actually see players getting better. Players are playing in the right position. You've got Chilwell playing at left back. You've got Colwell playing at left centre back. You know, Enzo Fernandez is now assisting on a regular basis. Casado looks like he's holding down midfield. Nicholas Jackson looks like he's even getting better. As You know, it's those it's yeah. those things that I'm going to be judging Pochettino on. And that's what's mm-hmm. frustrated me in recent weeks when I get, I get too much of a sense, like the Middlesbrough game, it was like, I feel too much like I'm watching late Tuchel and late Potter performances where it's like, mm. we're just trying to survive. And it's yeah. like, I'm not, that's not, if, if you're in here for the long haul, you shouldn't be trying to survive. You you're supposed to be progressing yeah. the team. Yeah, facts. Um, 100%. For me in this window, um, I think we do need to bring in a, a striker um, as because I don't, well, we've seen Breuer's asking price now, which I think is a bit too much because I don't think the club's interested will be able to or will pay that money. So, but I do believe that there needs to be a balance with Jackson in terms of, okay, you've got a Jackson, but then you need an experienced striker who can teach him, but also take responsibility off of him and bring a bit of balance to the table, give us an aerial threat um, and just give us something a bit different. So ideally, I think a striker would come in and, and balance the team out a lot potentially bring leadership qualities um, and, and maybe Broyer does have to be the, the full guy. I think it's, I think it's a, it's a shame because I do think he had potential before that injury. And I do think he was a player that could have, could have, I think we, we both call him almost, you know, potentially like a, a, a young Costa, but I think for where we're at right now, with the amount of young players we have on the books, when I look at the, 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 the strikers in Washington and Fofana and whispers and, it's just too many, way too many young players in one position and, and too many young players in one attack. So if we were to get good money for him, um, I'd let him go. Maybe put a buyback on there just to cover yourselves like you did with Livermento and try and see if you can bring in a striker in this window. And then I'd, I wouldn't do anything else. I don't think we need a centre-back desperately right now um, until we see what the, the situation is with, with Silva and also Fafana when he returns as well. Um and yeah, I, I I definitely don't feel sorry for us in the midfield. We've we've spent so much money in midfield. It has to work. It absolutely has to work. We have to find some sort of balance um, and some sort of um, some sort of partnership in that midfield. You cannot spend upwards of two hundred and sixty seventy million on 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 three midfielders and try and convince anybody you need another one. It's just that has to that has to be rectified hundred percent. So we'll see if, if if it can be. But yeah, I. I Make one one sign in and, and continue to make a few offloads um, or offload a few players if you have to. Yeah, it's uh, yeah on the midfield one. Like we were calling for investment for so many years in that area, and they've done it. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, I absolutely agree that any idea we need to be going out for someone else is just yeah farcical. Like it's, uh, I think it is just about giving those players more time to gel, and hopefully you get a Lavia that can get past these early injury problems and, and actually start to impact things and see how he develops. And, you know, Conor Gallagher doesn't look like he's going to be sold. So we'll continue to play. And, and I actually think in recent weeks, Casado, more so Casado than Enzo, but Enzo had a good game against Fulham. Yeah. Um, starting to play in roles that I envision they would under Pochettino were just when we signed them. So I think that's positive. Uh, but thank you so much, Matisse, for joining me. Um, as we do with all guests, just a chance for you to shout out where people can find much of your work i know it's not just chelsea work i know you do f1 work i mean i'm not a yeah. f1 fan myself but uh, i know yeah. you do that so any anything you want to plug now's the time to do it yeah bro appreciate it. um guys this it's mah for sure on the youtube channel and then you can see me on the big six dr on track gp as well um and yeah a couple of other places but those are the those are the main ones on a weekly and uh yeah listen for me it's just about it's just about getting through this window without you know, absolutely smashing up the place and, and having 10 ins and 10 outs. So it's been an absolute pleasure. And I was checking my channel there the other day and I saw my first live was actually with yourself, bro. Um, with You know, if you guys go and check it out, you'll see the live and you go to the, the oldest live, the first live on the channel, I think was with so me, and, me and Son of Chelsea. So yeah, man, it was brilliant. Brilliant. Um, going back there and seeing seeing 
the old content. So yeah, check it out, people, and, and subscribe. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this show. If you're a Chelsea fan and you want more carefree content, please do hit that subscribe button. Really helps the channel out as well as the like button and sharing it around with friends so more people can get involved in the community. And you can follow Son of Chelsea across socials at Son of Chelsea on TikTok, on Instagram and on X. Thank you.